it's Andrea and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a really special one. We are going to be celebrating this beautiful lady right here, Jema. This was the first time that I really got to know Jema. Jema, Julie, and I right here in a row were all extravaganza presenters at the convention for Close to My Heart back in 2019. And let me just say, I think the bond was instantaneous among us. And so now Jema has celebrated her 10,000th subscriber on YouTube. Isn't that amazing? It's such a great achievement. In honor of that, the creative design team has all decided to do a great big celebration YouTube collaboration. And I am going to be scrap lifting one of Jema's layouts today. Here is the layout that I have decided to scrap lift. I loved how bright and cheerful this layout was. And I immediately envisioned doing this pattern using the It's the Little Thing 6x6 six six paper pack. And I had the perfect photo in mind for this. So I'm going to go pretty close to what Jame has done with just a few little touches different, but I just love the idea. Here is my base page. I have a 12 inch piece of sapphire cardstock and I've cut down a white base to 11 and a half by 11 and a half and I've adhered that down. And I even used my Cricut to kind of gut out the middle of this 12 by 12 piece. And I put all of my photo mats for the sapphire pieces within that Cricut cut. So I saved some paper and I was able to reuse it right for the same project. Now, Jame is always really big on splatters. I know she loves her black shimmer brush. I have this Night Gloss Spray. I know that is not a current Close to My Heart product, but many of us have these kind of things in our stash. Or if you had a sapphire kind of shimmer brush, you could use that. Even black, black accents might look really pretty here as well. But I am simply going to just kind of take some more of that off. I'm going to just flick this randomly and get a few splatters here and there and a few of the corners. Really want it heavier up here. So we're going to give it a little more and down here. I'm going to bring in my Versamat. I find that this is really helpful to use when I'm trying to line up bits and pieces of projects. So I'm just going to give myself a little tape. I usually put it right in the center. And then I find that my Versamat is moving. My paper is moving on my Versamat. So I'm going to give this just a little bit more for this project. I saw that Jama did and she is so smart because we really don't want this layout to move. Now the good thing about this glitter spray is the gloss spray is that it dries really quickly and we can go ahead and start building our layout right away. So let me show you it's a little thing paper pack in case you haven't seen it. Now I've worked with this a few times and I've really enjoyed working with it. It has some really bold colors. I've got to be honest, it had to grow on me in the beginning. So it has some white graphic-y kind of papers and that's, you'll find those all in the beginning. And then it goes into these more subtle, brightly colored patterns and there are lots of fun. And then it's got some black and white. So I'm going to be focusing on these bright patterns here. I just felt like there were several colors in here that would coordinate really well with the photos of my daughter that I have. Here's the photos that were my inspiration in creating this layout. It was just a happy layout of my daughter Isabella. And I just thought that some of the colors in the It's a Little Thing just seemed to work so well for Isabella's shirt here and the drink just had really beautiful colors in it. So I have literally cut down just squares of two and one quarter. Now when I was cutting up my paper pad, I ended up with these little pieces at the end, but that's okay. I want to use those. But first, I just want to talk about some exciting news. We are going to celebrate our creative design team membership groups one year anniversary. We're going to have a great big celebration next weekend and it's a great big free event with challenges, classes, and prizes. Also, in honor of our one-year anniversary, we're going to be opening up membership. You can sign up today and you'll have access to a library full of classes immediately. All of the information that you'll need to find these links will be listed down below in the video description. We are back and this is what I've done. I have adhered all of these squares down 
kind of lightly because I'm going to build on top of those, but I wanted it lightly tacked down this way in case I needed to rearrange any of the colors. I could do that. I used my T-square ruler. There is a great big line down here that indicates the one inch at a two inch mark. So you'll see like there's, I don't know if you can see, but there's these little crosshairs. And so I simply lined this up with the edge of the white paper. And that's how I built the bottom row. I also came in an inch from each part, each edge of the white paper or one and one quarter inches in from the blue. And I put down these outside squares first. And then I just filled in the gap of the remaining half inch by spacing these out. So this isn't a quarter of an inch. It's not an eighth of an inch. It's kind of just E equally spaced these two and then I went flipped the mat did the same thing with this top pretended it was the bottom turned it back around and then I just simply filled in with these remaining pieces by lining up again and making sure that they were all against the edge of my t-square ruler so it looks really complicated but it's a really simple process if you use your t-ruler the next step would be putting our photos down this one, Jema had going really up and down, and I'm going to try to just kind of center this. I am not going to, in fact, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm not going to put that great big curved banner piece up here. I'm actually going to move my banner piece down below. So I want to give myself just a touch more room. Now I have these two photos of Isabella, so I think I want to do something like this. I do want them to be a bit askew. And you'll see that I do have this spot here that is going to need something. I'm going to need another piece of cardstock to sneak in there. So I'm going to actually go ahead and use the piece that was left over, like I've done with the orange right here. So I think that Jama had hers slightly overlapping, like so, and I want to do the same kind of thing. I think hers even overlapped this photo just a bit. I've double matted like she did too. That's not something I typically do. Jama had matted with white and then navy and I decided to go with, or I should say sapphire. I did sapphire and then I did the lagoon on the outside with little eighth of an inch borders. You might remember that Jama told us about her favorite font from defont.com and she created a title as well out of that font. So I tried to stay true to that font that she used. It's autumn and November. And so I downloaded it and it is just gorgeous. I've cut it out of some holographic cardstock and I have done a layer. Um, I have offset using my Cricut and I have done that in white. And I feel like that kind of pops off of the page a little bit more. I want to put this about here. I really don't want to cover Isabella's head so much <laughs> right there so although her hair was a little messy from that Florida humidity I also have a big banner piece now you might be wondering where the good times came from I went over to I think it was everyday life cricket collection um, that close to my heart used to sell you can still go out there and buy it there was also this celebrate banner um, it was a whole celebrate layout but I chose to use not their celebrate, but the one that I created. It had these fun little pieces that were like fringy and funky. And so I cut those out again with the holographic paper and I just kind of put three of them together. Now I like running my fingers over these because I like them to curl a bit and have, you know, just some movement in them. So go ahead and do that if, if you are like me and like that movement, but we're going to just carefully tack that down and slide that up under this photo right here and put that down and I'm going to offset it a little bit. I'm going to have it just peeking out past the photo mat over here. I just like that. It's kind of unexpected. So let me just flip these up just a bit more. There we go. I know it's going to get crushed in my, in my page protector, but that's okay. Now this, um, I was debating on putting this up with more foam tape or leaving it down flat. I'm going to leave it down flat and I'm just going to adhere this down with a line of just regular adhesive here. I think that want this to go right about here. I kind of like how it mimics the waviness of these photos. And then in that same Cricut collection, I also cut out some of these bursts. They were just happy. They reminded me kind of of a um kind of of a firework. Um 
They could be flowers if you saw them in that manner. I just thought that they were like happy little bursts of energy. And um, so I really wanted to use those. So I have three of those I'm going to use. I also have two. When I cut them out, I was using two sides of the honey butter cardstock. And as you can see, there was not enough contrast. So I went ahead and cut out one more out of Sundance and used that along with, with this particular color. So I was left with these two bonus pieces. And I really want to just tag those, like um, slide those under here, kind of like so. And they're just going to be fun little bursts out from under that picture. So we will tack those down one and two. And actually, I think I like the lighter side. So we'll just slide those under. And like I said, I'll glue those down at a later point in time. But they're just like a happy little burst. And then we're going to just put these up here. I think I'm going to switch the arrangement of those. And the reason that I'm doing that is I didn't want the holographic paper too close to its counterpart down here. But I still wanted a visual triangle of these bursts. Next, I thought I would just look and see what I had in my collection as far as dots went. I have some Chelsea Gardens dots. And this had some interesting black and glacier colors, which I thought might work in this layout. So we're just going to pull these out. Guys, now I always have to do just a little bit of stash diving. So we're just going to put the big burst right on here. The big enamel dots right on these bursts, I should say. So there we are with those. I have a few pieces out of the It's Little Thing collection where there are some little black bursts as well. So I do kind of like that because it kind of moves my eyes down. So we'll keep that arrangement. Now you might have noticed that Jema also brought in some leaves. So I was contemplating doing that. I used a couple of my old die cut sets, my thin cut sets specifically. I used this particular one from one set. And then I noticed that Jamie used these two leaves from, I think these might've been like build a flower or something. So I cut those out of green apple because we have some green apple pops in the paper. And I think it's gonna work. I do like that arrangement of the leaves. I think it's kind of fun. And then since I put some black elements here, one of the other things that I thought I could do is just bring in one little border stamp now I have the It's the Little Things stamp set right here. It's Little Things. This is the scrapbooking stamp set. And what I'm going to do with these is I pulled off this little checked border up here. I hope you guys can see it. And I already have that ready to go. I have some black ink. I'm actually going to flip my Versamat at this point. So we're just going to wiggle this off. flip the versa mat because I do want to just put a couple little stamped elements. Sometimes colors like black tend to just ground something a little bit more, kind of like the sapphire did, but just a little bit deeper. Could also add a few more black gems. We do have some. So let's go ahead and I don't know about you, but I really love the way that this layout came together. Let me hold it up and I can show you. We've got that vibrant holographic paper and it's just so fun. Um, I think Jamin did a wonderful, wonderful design here with this layout and I'm so happy that I was able to scrap lift it. I think all of the little details Jay may use some different accents, but here's one that's come to life in a totally different color palette and totally different flowers, but I still think the whole thing comes together harmoniously. And thank you, Jama, for years of inspiration that you've given to all of us. And here's to your next 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching, everyone.